Fire Island at eight o'clock. And if you haven't got your tickets yet, you can get those at corkcoral.ie. And for our talk, I'm joined by um, Artistic Director of Chamber Choir Ireland, Paul Hillier. I'm joined by the conductor for this event, Andrew Sinnott, and also the festival's commissioned composer, Amanda Feary. So it's really good to have the three of you with us. Thank you for joining me. Paul is over in Denmark, aren't you, Paul? Yes. Definitely. And Amanda, I believe, is actually just down the road from me in Cork. And Andrew is up in Dublin. Um, just, just to give everybody a bit of a bit of context. And I should, before we say anything else, remind you that this is being recorded and streamed on Facebook and YouTube. Um, so maybe Andrew, I'll start by asking you um, if you've if, if you've worked with Chamber Choir Ireland before. And um, what, what what were your experiences over the last few days? Well, um, I did, uh, my first time conducting Chamber Choir Ireland was last summer when the Con National Concert Hall put on a uh, concert in memory of victims of COVID-19 uh, situation. And uh, uh, we did Fourier's Requiem together. And that kind of, it's uh, anybody who's ever been in a choir or, had anything to do with choirs knows that piece intimately it's just one of those pieces everybody knows it it's kind of like thing if somebody puts it on you just start singing your part that in my case the tenor part and uh, so it's in a way it was like kind of coming home musically to me it didn't uh, it it felt like this I love doing this this is great and with the choir uh, the choir even though it was slightly reduced from the, the amount uh, that normally the choir is 16, it was 12, I think, on the day. Uh, it still had, you know, they were amazingly responsive to all the musical requests I made. And uh, that, for me, was a, a real, the real joy of it, having yeah. learned and discovered that piece in the amateur choral, this is, uh, where you, you spent a lot of time working on notes and all of those kind of things. So it was a real, I mean, just it was just fun and a pleasure so 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 what is it for you then that, that working with chamber Choir Ireland you know what's different about that and, and maybe t talking a little bit about about, about the recording that we're going to hear this evening well it's it's I mean Paul will uh, know this better than me uh, but it's it's set up to to operate I suppose in a way like an orchestra that you walk in and the 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 there's very uh, professional orchestra where you the there's very little note bash that kind of stuff kind of get you get over that hurdle very quickly and you move on to the the, the nitty-gritty of making music uh, and the, and making the the musical compositions speak properly and that's the so that's the, the real kind of um, joy I suppose of it you know for, for a musician like me that I can walk in and uh, and immediately start making music and and you you speak a language of uh, of uh, of musical detail and that's fun it's I mean it's a great um, kind of liberation for anybody who's ever um, uh, no bashed anything with anybody that it's a, it is it's a kind of a, a, a liberating and enjoyable experience so I suppose that's uh, that kind of sums it up um, uh, yeah. a high caliber high caliber musician uh, and singer that's really what it is I suppose sure oh, we might come back to um to uh, work, working with the choir in a moment, but maybe Paul, if we, we just go to the program tonight, which which you compiled, didn't you? You, you put together the repertoire, but but you haven't been able to come to come over for COVID reasons and conduct it yourself. So 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 maybe tell us a little bit about how the program was put together. It's called mm -hmm. "There Is Sweet Music," isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. I, I I thought I would of course be doing the program because um, it was planned an outline anyway, some time ago. Um, well, obviously, if you take one look at it, it's clear that there's a lot of English music. And I, I decided it was time, I think, especially for the Cor Choral Festival, um, to just take some of the favorite composers that I have from that kind of early uh, 20th century uh, English part song era, um, and then find a way to, to fit the uh, the commission work and the, the prize winner. And of course, when I do the program for the Cork Festival, it's always 
this unknown stuck in the middle of the program because you don't know who the prize winner is going to be and you don't know what sort of piece it's going to be. So whether it's going to be fast or slow, um, funny or whatever, um, and we've had all different kinds. Um, so that, that actually is you know, a, a question mark that stays there. And this year we've got two prize winners, the one from last year, which couldn't be performed, um, and the one that's won this year. Yeah, and so it's Peter I, Levy last year, wasn't it? And uh, Nora Walsh this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and by pure chance, these two compositions, these two winners are completely different and they go right next to each other. So thank God it's, it's going to work quite nicely in the programme, I think. One yeah, of them they're contrasting is, pieces. Yeah, very much so. Um, and uh, so I think they, they, they go very well together, but that's, that's luck. Um, but that, then I always put that in the middle of the programme somewhere. But then we had, um, we also every year have a new commission group. Amanda's in this case, um, and again, you know, it's it's something different from the other stuff in the program. And although I had some idea of what was coming, um, you still have to think about where it's going to go. So anyway, it begins with people like Vaughan Williams and um, Elgar, and then later has Holst. Um, and also, I threaded through the program at different points several of the pieces by Michael Tippett, who I particularly admire, and who's almost become, since his death some years ago, he's kind of become a neglected composer. So I, I really wanted to include that. Sure, yeah, um, he, he, he is a little bit neglected, isn't he, in the light of uh, I think, him being a, a, exactly contemporaneous with yeah, Benjamin Britten. Yeah, <clears throat> exactly. And I mean, back in the 70s, I remember when he became almost, his reputation almost overtook Britain's but then it kind of fell back again. It's gone but, the other way. Um, yeah. There's a new biography, actually, isn't there, by um, Oliver Soden. I don't know if you've seen that. No, I, I heard about it, but yeah. I haven't. I haven't uh, yeah. So I, maybe he is actually coming back. Well, back I've heard a little bit. You know, he didn't write a lot of unaccompanied choral music, so there's not much we can do for him, as it were. But <laughs> um, I wanted to include these pieces for that for that purpose. Yeah, and then more or less around the Hulse piece in the middle, we've got the two prize winners and then the uh, premiere of Amanda's piece, uh, Long, Long Wave. And maybe at this point, Amanda, will maybe talk a little bit about Long Wave. Um, mm -hmm. Perhaps uh, tell us about the text to start with. Yeah, the, the text is based on it's uh, based on the shipping forecast. I kind of reapproached the text, so it's not the full setting. I took away some of the place names that you would hear in the shipping forecast. I was more interested in the descriptions. I mean, when we listen to the shipping forecast, there's a lot of specialist maritime information that we don't really understand. Um, but then you get these phrases that that kind of do stick with you, like falling slowly rising slowly um, and I was interested in in setting those portions of the shipping forecast because they have their own uh, kind of poetry um, and then the shipping forecast itself I've always been kind of interested in it I think I was quite young when I first heard it um, it has its own cadence and rhythm and inflection it doesn't sound like the news it doesn't sound like talk radio um, so it's poetic, isn't it somehow? Yeah, and I I remember I was quite young when I first heard it, and I remember I remember stopping to listen, even though I hadn't a clue what was you know what was actually being described, um, and it's always stuck with me. But um, the the whole process of writing this piece it started a good few years ago actually because I had worked with Chamber Choir Ireland before, um on the choral sketches project, which was between um, uh, Chamber Choir Ireland and the Contemporary Music Centre. And that was, I think, Paul, that was the inaugural year I did it. It was 2017. Um, and Tarek O'Regan was the mentor. Um, so I met Tarek over Skype a couple of times to go through the process um, of the sketches of a piece. So actually, um, there are a lot of there are a lot of fragments from those sketches from 2017 that are in this piece, um, 
I cha- I changed a good few things in the meantime. Um, but there's kind of still sort of those embryonic sort of developments of the early piece in this piece as well. So, so is that music that you've reused or is it um, uh, fragments that you haven't used before? Um, they were, so when I'd composed the sketches for the Choral Sketches project, there was a workshop um, of not the full pieces, but just of the sketches that we had composed for the choir. Um, so I got to hear at that stage um, a couple of those ideas. And then later that year, there was um, there was a workshop of the completed piece. So since that completed piece, I've gone and I've gone through a couple of more changes for, for long wave. Um, and but uh, there's a good portion of it still there, even from a couple of years ago. So it's probably the longest process for any or longest gestation anyway for any piece yes. I've written. So, yeah. and so how how did you go about is there a sort of could you give us a brief listener's guide to you know to to the music are there things that we should be listening out for how is how does the text relate to to the music um i suppose even at that um sketch sketches stage in 2017 um i was kind of interested in I suppose less kind of vertical choral textures and more horizontal in, in terms of um so for example the piece starts off with um some of the singers um whispering at different speeds. Um so it none of that is actually notated, so it's kind of semi sort of structured improvisatory material. Um then, so I was interested in textures like that, where there's sort of shifting, overlapping tempos. Um, and then there are kind of further elements then where there is that kind of vertical chordal choral sound. Um, but I was kind of, I was interested in, in a combination of, of those two textures in the piece. Um, I was also interested in exploring um, sibilance um so especially on the word slowly um i was interested in kind of overlapping rhythms um of that sound too um but not for the sake of it being um i suppose like an extended technique or anything but sort of sort of um in the sense of it being a happy accident that all these kind of rhythms and sounds overlap on each other um but not for i guess the extended technique effect of it. Um, so is there anything else? Um, yeah, I think I think that's it. You might, you might ask Andrew uh, as, as, as conductor and indeed composer yourself, aren't you, Andrew? Uh, we, we, we might ask you how, how you found it and, you know, whether were there challenges within that um, for the choir or for you or any... Well, any- I- it's very interesting. It's very interesting that uh, it's had a long gestation because one thing that's really clear from it is that it's really self-assured. There isn't a moment when it feels like there's uh, uncertainty about what's going to come out. You know, like some some pieces get written and you're not sure how they're going to work. There, there there's an there's a, a, a notated um, kind of aspiration. Let's put it like that. And I, I think that this piece seems to have everything worked out really clearly. It works extremely well. I don't, I don't think I've said that to you, Amanda. We haven't had, it works very well. It just kept, um, now you haven't heard it, I take it. This you 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 haven't heard any recording of it or anything like that, Amanda, have you? Just um just um I guess the rehearsal recording. Oh yeah, yeah. Well yeah. It, yeah. in the it's it's a piece that works. Like a lot of the music, of course, in the in the in the in the more generous acoustic that um, that is provided by Saint Finbar's Cathedral as well, of course. Yeah. Another really interesting thing that you said there was that uh, about the whole um, uh, the that whole um, uh, shipping forecast, the effect it had on you. I have exactly the same experience of shipping forecasts, and that I have a I have a kind of a theory just just formulated only in the last few seconds that if you if you put if you put kind of heart monitors on people and you play the shipping forecast and everybody's heartbeat would calm down. And that, I feel that there's something really calm. And about your piece then, 
it's really, really just kind of, it's it's calm. It's, it's calm. It, 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 there's a place near the end where the where's the dizzy um, the dizzy effect in kind of um, the the altos, but mm-hmm. apart from that, everything is just so kind of measured and calm. It's really beautiful. It's lovely, and I, I'm Thank I'm you. fairly sure that the, the audience are going to love it. So that's it's a win win for Cork Choral Festival. <laughs> Well, we, we're, we're all looking forward to hearing that now, definitely. Um, uh, maybe back to Paul. Um, now, obviously, you're you're one of the judges of the Sean O'Reader comp- composition competition. Um, and, and without giving giving anything away and, and without being too specific, I, I just wondered what what your thoughts um, were on on composition in in Ireland, which I suppose the Sean O'Reader is is um, uh, sort of plots a history of it in, in some way. Um, I mean, you, you see all the, the compositions that don't win uh, as well as the ones that do. Is, is, is there any comment you'd like to make there on, on, on maybe modern composition? Well, um, I've always, since I started working with the choir some years ago, um, I've been actually very surprised and delighted to find just how many really interesting composers there are from the very well-known ones, um, which we performed a lot, and the new pieces that we've commissioned, um, down to these uh, unknown composers, or would-be composers. Um, tremendous reservoir of talent, I feel. Um, and so I'm, I think it's great that we're able to be a small part of, of trying to get that to come out into the world more widely. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I really was absolutely delighted the more time I spent here. I keep, keep even now discovering more composers as we go along. So that, that particular job is never finished. When we do the, the prize, there's usually a, just in round numbers, you know, maybe anything between 12 or 20 uh, pieces submitted. Um, it was quite a lot the last couple of years into the 20s, as I remember. And of course, that's a lot of pieces to get sufficiently acquainted with, just looking at them, um, to, to make a decision about what just each, and this, is, this of course goes for the three judges involved. Um, how do you, what do you judge these pieces against? I mean, I, I, I basically look at these pieces and, and say, do I want to perform this piece? Because uh, then, I can use my own experience of looking at a score and getting a kind of buzz from it, which makes me want to spend more time with it and discover what's in it. And so that's my personal approach. Um, but the, the other two judges uh, may have other ways of, of working this out. And anyway, once we've all had a chance to look uh, at the pieces, then we start communicating. We, we maybe make our selection sort of tentative selections sent, sent in to the others, three or four names. I think these are the best ones. And then of course they answer with a completely different list. <laughs> and so you, you think, okay, well now we're gonna have some conversations. And then somehow every year it, it works itself out and we pick a, a winner that we're happy with. And, and in some way, um, the festival forces you to program these things. Would you, would you be programming <laughs> new works of your own accord? <laughs> um, well, I, I, I love to do new works. Um, I think, uh, obviously, these are, how can I put it, mostly student works, so they wouldn't normally find them, their way necessarily into a programme like this, but actually, that's exactly where they belong, because the only way you can really find out about a piece, um, as a performer, but also as a member of the audience, is to perform the thing and let it be there in front of an audience, you know, that doesn't have specialized knowledge or some people do, of course. Um, And then the test is real. And you only know a piece for the first time after you've performed it once or twice. So, you know, it's it's good that we have this this way to present pieces like this. It's very important for, as uh, for composing for composers would be composers whatever to have the incentive to write something I mean like what when you're there you're young you're looking at well will I do it will I won't I 
there's a chance it could get performed. That's a massive incentive. Like yeah. massive. And then the idea that it could be performed by Ireland's premier chamber choir, that's like again, that's a, a multiplied by another, you know, hundred. It's a really important thing. because uh, uh, I know my because I did the show, I um I'm a, a former winner of the Sean Arena myself back in 1990. Can you believe it? Um, but uh that was the very thought process for me. Uh what here's an opportunity that I would be a fool not to take. And it's that, that kind of incentive that eventually led me into a kind of a semi-career as a composer, you know? So that, that really, really important things, uh, these, these competitions, especially ones with, that are run with, with, in this way that have a proper um, thought out and musically considered outcome. Yeah. And Amanda, um, is it uh, is it difficult writing for Chamber Choir Ireland? Um, well, I I find writing for choir difficult, not Chamber Choir Ireland, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I find um, yeah, I still I you know even after sort of the workshopping of um, the early stages of this piece, I mean I've, I've written for. Um, smaller vocal ensembles, so vocal quartets and quintets. Uh, and I would have, have experienced singing in smaller vocal ensembles as well. I think I'm, it's not that I'm more drawn to write, I kind of, I'm, I've more confidence writing for a smaller vocal, vocal forces. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, I still feel like, I still feel like I have training wheels on in a way, uh, writing for choir. I think um, I I like to I would like to write more choral like for larger choral forces as well. Do, do you find um, you write mostly instrumental music? Yeah, I mean, right now I'm working. I am I'm working on an opera, so I'm setting a lot of text, um, and I'm working. I'm writing for two sopranos and a mezzo, um, and I mean I know that's going to stand to me, even doing the. The opera and setting the text that way that will definitely stand to me in in a choral context as well absolutely um i guess i've always found it difficult because there's a there's a certain kind of choral sound i know i don't want to write <laughs> um and i sort of i'm trying to find i'm still trying to find the language and the sort of texture that i do want to approach choral music with and i still think i have I probably there's a few more pieces in me where I, I'll eventually figure that out, yeah, and become more confident with it. But why do you not like, or not like, but why do you find composing for a choir uh, difficult? What what's the step from composing for just three or four people, and say sixteen or twenty? Because I always feel that um, when I know a composer, uh, the work they do. Um, and I asked them to write a piece, what I really want to say to them is, please just write the way you normally write, only it happens mm. to be for voices. Mm. Um, you know, rather than trying to write uh, choral music with a capital C and an M. Um, you know, what makes, yeah. what makes it inter interesting to me is when a composer has a specific language, which you do. Um, and that's what we want to hear, uh, mm. not, you know, taking off the hat you normally wear and then wearing the choral composer. That's why I asked that question. Yeah, I think any other vocal, smaller vocal ensembles I've written for, I've known yeah. the individual's yeah. voices really well. Um, mm -hmm. not just not just range um, elements, but um, kind of timbre and character to them. And I know in writing for those individual voices, what can shine in a piece um and i guess there's things in a smaller vocal ensemble setting that i want to do more of if i had more voices i could do you know more kind of textural elements for example um so yeah i, I just still i i don't know i don't know exactly what it is with um writing for choir or chamber choir i'm, I'm just not super confident just yet um I think I'm so used to writing for, you know, one voice to one part 
with uh, smaller vocal ensembles that um, I feel like I'm not there in the choral context with the blend. You know, I found in, in other choir workshops that maybe the tenors are too high, which is actually a kind of a sound I quite enjoy, um, which w maybe works for a smaller vocal ensemble, but n maybe not so much for the chamber or, or a larger choir. Um, so there's just things like that. Maybe maybe I'm worrying too much about the practicalities. Um, I think there's something to be said for uh, for trusting the performers as well. To, oh yeah. yeah. Once you don't, once you don't, it's similar to uh, when you're writing for instruments, that there are certain um, things you know you can't do. Like for instance, um, put notes out of range, and that's kind of, that kind of thing that makes you look stupid. But like once you once you have a realistic uh, and kind of um, uh, decent understanding of where those extremes are, then then there's a thing that you can trust. Like the thing of blend is a thing that uh, is is something that that is is negotiated not only on the page but in 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 the rehearsal room and and between the singers and between the conductor and all those things. There's a whole kind of extra element to the compositional process that you're after that you've set the score just kind of happens with your intention in mind, which is a great thing that people normally want to do exactly what you want them to do, which is, uh, I think, a fabulous thing, you know, that uh, people are working their arses off to make sure that uh, the thing sounds the way you want it to sound and that you mm -hmm. represent on the score. Um, and any conscientious musician will try and do that. So I suppose there is a sense that you can maybe worry too much about those things. And as Paul says, that uh, uh, sometimes then you, you take the, um, the feariness of this. I'm not talking about you in particular, man, because I, but other composers perhaps will, as Paul says, kind of maybe even dumb themselves down or something to make it kind of easy or something. I don't know. I must say, no, I, I, I get what you mean. Yeah. Um, sorry, Paul. No, it just, I think, yeah, you can sort of lose in all the practicalities and worrying about everything, you can lose your sense of adventurousness maybe mm. a little bit um and and in a sense then your voice coming through in the work might not come through as much but you're I, just worried I, that everyone has time to breathe and all that kind of thing pray just as it's getting really interesting i'm aware the clock is on us um oh, sorry. We're, we're gonna, <laughs> just just as you were really getting into into discussion there it's uh, it's the way it is um so uh, time is up um uh, thank you very much all three of you for for joining me uh we will of course be seeing andrew on screen at <coughs> eight o'clock get your tickets if you haven't already for the chamber choir island concert there is sweet music uh we look forward to that um if you've already got your ticket like i said last night if you were listening get yourself a cup of tea maybe it's friday night get yourself something a little bit stronger um and we hope you enjoy the concert thank you very much once again Amanda, Paul and Andrew. Thank you.